all the way down to here, to, to California, to Blythe. This was all considered Aslan. And there's megaliths in the area as long as well as um, a Decalogue stone, which has the picture of Moses, which is Huamak in this book, the Book of Beginnings. In November of 1860, David Wirick of New York, Ohio, found an inscribed stone in a burial mound about 10 miles south of New York. The stone is inscribed on all sides with a condensed version of the Ten Commandments or Decalogue in the peculiar form of post-exilic square Hebrew letters. The robed and bearded the robed and bearded figure on the front is identified as Moses. Now now you realize why they go against people, aboriginals to America having beards. Because they don't want you, they don't want you to realize that this is the old world, and these things happen here, and you were in the middle of all of it. The front is identified as Moses in letters fanning over his head. The inscription is carved into a fine-grained black stone that only appears to be brown in the accompanying overexposed color. Um, photographs. It has been identified by geologists Ken Bork and Dave Hawkins of Denison University as limestone. A fossil crinoid stem is visible on the surface. The stone reacts strongly to hydrochloric. Um, it is definitely not black alabaster or gypsum as previously reported here. According to James L. Murphy of Ohio State University, large white cranioid stems are common in the upper Mercer and Boggs limestone units in Muskingum, Colorado, and elsewhere. And these limestones are often very dark gray to black in color. You could find, so they're just talking about the stones, but if you come down here, it's gonna show you the different items. This also was there, this keystone, which says holy of holies, king of the earth, the law of God, the word of God, higher, higher. Who do the Native Americans have in every one of their chants? So it says the old red land was the name of the original home in the north from which the Totex migrated. And what is there over there? Us, the red people, were the red dirt. The red dirt, like in Hawaii, there's a lot of red dirt. We come from the soil with Atachotsnas. We're from the soil <clears throat> from which the Toltecs migrated. Their leader, Quetzalcoatl, wore a long robe marked with crosses. The sign identified him as the one who crosses. Quetzalcoatl may be meaning one who follows the creator, who crossed came back to the Creator. Kutukoto attained the land of promise and his golden reign on and car of an ear of wheat grew so large that one man could hardly carry it. Now we know in America and, and Polynesia we have old photos of all of these miraculous fruits and vegetables that was just the most gigantic fruits and vegetables you've ever seen. Right? Because this is the, the greatest soil to grow on. Joshua led the people into a land flowing with milk and honey. Where a single bunch of grapes was a load for two men. Moses is placed in a cleft of a rock whilst the Lord goes by. And tradition asserts the print of his body to have been engraved on the stone visible to this 
day. Whoa. The impression of the hand of Huamak is likewise said to have been stamped in the rock. The lion god not only supplied, supplied the Hebrews with their mythical Moses and Joshua, the twin typical and transforming lions, the lion of light and the lion of darkness reappear amongst the 12 symbolic signs called Totomi of the North American Indians. One of these 12 signs is a dual form of the same figure answering to the Egyptian twin line. It is a fabulous panther of or lynx. The body in both has a human head with horns. And right, what didn't what didn't we see a panther in in the petroglyph in California Blit right next to the 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 woman giving birth? Right? Right? The body in both has a human head with horns. And isn't that what we always are shown? The horned, the horned one. <laughs> but one of the two is marked all over the body with crosses. Didn't in Ho in Amer in Hawaii? Didn't they have um, before colonization tattoos going down their bodies on the side of their bodies of crosses, right? And they say, "Oh, you know Christianity," and they said. We know of a leader who took us out of bondage and gave us, took us to, to a promised land, and who, 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 who uh, they're talking about Joshua and all these different ancestors, and the Christians are like, oh, so you know Christianity? See, Christianity is true. This is what happened in the past. <clears throat> One of the twelve signs is a dual form of the same figuring. Wait. These, according to Schoolcraft, denote darkness in the Indian symbolism. And this is in perfect accordance here with the Egyptian as the name of Kak, the god of crossing. Therefore, the cross means darkness and night. Otherwise, without crosses, is the same animal in the light. The name of the chimera is given as Mishi Bez Bezzi. Not an impossible rendering of Maushu, the twin lions or lion of light and shade. Which glyph is this one? What we are seeing here is Kokopini. And he represents Ketsarkoa. The Aztec uh, god of Quetzalcoatl. So this one is... Sisame. Sisame. His face there, you see his nose. I mean, he's not like a normal person, is he? No, no, no it looks just like a... an ET. He looks like an extraterrestrial, uh-huh, yeah. An extraterrestrial? Is it possible that these incredible geoglyphs represent not just mythological gods, that it was here the location of the Aztecs legendary home of Aslan where extraterrestrial visitors came down from well, I didn't think they want from the sky Aslan is very important in Mythology. It was a place where the gods came down to give them the information and prophecies that the Aztecs had. I mean, you're maintaining that this whole area here around Blythe and the Colorado River is the ancient homeland of, of the Aztecs and, and, and the gods, too? Yes. The Jews were made by the Nahua people. The Nahua are the origin of the Aztecas and the Mexicas. So they're the ones that made them at first. And then the Nahua people made these geoglyphs to to honor the, the creator God. Right. 
And do not forget the creator. Where we came, came from. from. All okay. the creator. Could it be that Blythe, California really was the ancestral home of the Aztec people? Oh, this is tiring. And that more than 1,000 years ago, the area was visited. astronaut theorists okay that's enough so we're gonna f come over here and say um uh but in here in the same testimony that in the garden of eden there are four rivers radiating from one parent stream and these four rivers orinoco as we have seen we find in the scandinavian traditions and in the legends of the chinese the tartars and the singhalese the tapti Tibetans and Buddhists, the Hebrews and the Brahmins. And not only do we find this tradition of the Garden of Eden in the Old World, but it meets also us also among the civilized races of America. The elder Montezuma said to Cortes, Our fathers dwelt in that happy and prosperous place which they called Atzlan, which means whiteness. This is why Montezuma told his soldiers to take the gold to Utah, because that was Aslan, Uda, Judah. In this place, there's a great mountain in the middle of the water, which is called Kualkun, because it has a point, because it has the point somewhat turned over toward the bottom. And for this cause, it is called Kualkun, which means crooked mountain. He then proceeds to describe the charms of this favorite land abounding in birds, game, fish, trees, fountains enclosed with elders and junipers and alder trees, both large and beautiful. The people planted maize, red peppers, tomatoes, beans, and all kinds of plants in furrows. Here we have the same mountains in the midst of the water. All right, and you see that description, right? Aslan. Where is this, all this maize, red peppers, tomatoes, all these game, fish, and trees? Where is that? <laughs> Where do you think that is, huh? Aslan. Now let's, uh, let's look here. This is from uh, the hotel. This is showing Hawaii and Dukanamo. <laughs> culture right now we just we just seen that the Moshe culture is in Atacama right above Nazca around Cusco and all of these places in the Andes okay right now we look at the, the different you know in looks and phenotypes it's all going to imitate are phenotypes these people um, who are no, who are realizing they're aboriginals and who have been labeled by names like Mexican or African American or Afro Cuban or Afro Mexican all these different terms but uh, doesn't tell who you really are because who you really are has been uh, hidden when I say you, I mean I'm talking to everybody who is in the same predicament as I am in, right? So you look
look at this. And this is a Moshe statue. And if you look at Dukan Amoku. And he has the same lips as me, big fat lower lips and like a medium sized top lip. So uh, I grew up in like a plantation. Stevenson, there was a host for a party when they came and started negotiating with the monarchy. This is Diamond Head. Mahele, birth of Hawaiian private property. The Kali area under the Hilton Hawaiian village was once an ancient village of cultural significance. The area known as Kali was once rich farmland and fish ponds fed by the streams that flowed from the Koalau Mountain. Oral traditions tell us that sometime in the 15th century, Oahu chief Kalamakua was instrumental in developing the intricate water systems throughout Waikiki. Um, besides the large fish ponds, the waters offshore from Kalia are said to have been excellent <clears throat> for fishing and diving. Residents of Kalia harvested lean to seaweed, and tender, tended wetlands, loki, taro field. The Great Mahele of 18... So you see... Uh, you see the Moche culture. Uh, if we look at the Moche culture. Let us say that uh, Moche culture is uh, agriculturally based with a significant level of investment in the construction of network of irrigation canals for diversion of waters to supply their crops. And you know that we're the best canal irrigation um, creators and uh, their culture was sophisticated and their artifacts expressed their lives the scenes of hunting fishing fighting sacrifice sexual encounters and elaborate ceremonies for ceramics ceramics gold work monumental construction and irrigation system now this all of this is placed at a thousand years ago around those times okay if we go further into this Try and skip forward. So, if you look at uh, this one, it'll say um, when I was reading this earlier, it gave you places where uh, these artifacts can be found, like cities. And then um, they said uh, one of these cities where these artifacts are is called Loma Negro. I think it was in the last one. Right there. Okay. 
but in here it says Loma Negro and if you look at Loma Negro it shows all these artifacts in Peru of Afro phenotypes and they even call it Negro and if you realize the history you know the Amazon was called Negro land and the Amazon River was called um, Negro uh, River, Negro River. So you realize that they're hiding a lot of our history. So if we come over here and we look at uh, Luzia, Luzia is age 11,500 years old. Okay, she was she's the oldest dated skeleton from the Americas. You know, this woman is from South America and has. Negroid, Australian, Oceanic, Polynesian type of features. Okay. Now, if you look, what I shared on Facebook, I was. What happened was, I found this this thing right here. On, uh, I found this thing right here. <clears throat> we don't ever move. Talking about surfing in Peru. On how this is why I came about this lesson. And then I eventually found that ancient alien things and I put it together. So surfing hidden roots in Peru. So what they're trying to say is that. 10,000 years ago and further, there's a tradition of surfing in Peru, which still exists today, but is suppressed. And they'll go along, they'll go in here and talk about how surfing is well known in Hawaii, but people forget the ancient, ancient roots of surfing in Peru, the sport of kings, right? In Hawaii, Specific surf spots could only be surfed by kings, by chiefs, right? The sport of chiefs, not kings, chiefs, all right? Now, this sparked a, a thing with me, and it, it made me go into it. So, we all know that the petroglyphs are very similar, okay? But here, this is where I go into my family. So this is Luzia woman, a skeleton, right? We just went. This is the the recreation by the best recreator of face through skeleton work, right? Now this is my grandmother, right? This is my great grandmother, Ida. Her name is Ida. She comes from the Moikeha bloodline. This is a great uh, chief line coming from the Ulu lines, all right? Now this is exact image of this. Okay, if you, conti if you continue on my post, you see the phenotypes, the different looks of the Polynesian, but it's a, it's a blurry picture. Now it shows here that in articles that Polynesians reached South America for Columbus. But I know that we're specifically talking about Hawaiians. I know that at my culture, my island at least, was in was in South America. And there's irrefutable evidence to that. This is why they don't teach you about Polynesians if you're an Afro-American. Uh, this is the same article, Riding the Native Wave, Surfing Hidden Roots in Peru. Okay. Well, they're always showing you the DNA links to Australians. But when they say Australians, they're not identifying in just one tip type. 
they, they they're taking the the different the Malaysian the Melanesian and the Austronesian and they're creating they're saying oh these are all Australians and they're not differentiating between the, the groups okay so they don't always mean the outback people when they think when they're talking about the connection in DNA okay Look, this is a Hawaiian male. See his his nose, same same like mine's. His cheekbone, same like mine's. His beard, which turns white. All of our beards and hair turn pearly white when we get old. Our skin comes purple like this in the sun. If we get the sun, you see this guy. What's he doing? He's sitting in the sun, point pounding poi. That's, a, that's the best sun you're gonna get. This is the same technique that Central Americans would use for making masa. They pound the corn and the kernels would come off and then they can make bread out of it, different masa. All right, so you see that. Now if we look over here, I'm just gonna get this out and I don't know, I might stop the video, we'll see. So if you look over here, Yahudi Abia has as an excerpt from America is the original Egypt, Eagle Land. It says, name of America and the significance of the something of the United States the fact one recognized that it is impossible to separate the eagle from America the land shadowed with wings of Isaiah over which accordingly appear two grand eagles the red swan flying down the Milky Way and the winged steeds Pegasus and Euclid all the wings known to astronomy without taking the bear from Russia Perseus from Persia and the flood of light is poured upon the history and mythology. And where heretofore much has been vague and inscrutable, now we are able to at least to see men as trees walking. The map accompanying this work is arranged so that the reader may keep it continually before his eyes for the purpose of reference as he is led through the examination of network of co coincidences with accidental, which, which if accidental will prove that chance is as artistically methodolic, methodical, methodical, methodical in its operations as law itself. When following the course of the constellations, those immovable and perpetual perpetually fastened upon America are reached, it will appear that while all that is sublime in the historic past centers upon Egypt, all that is in sublime oh my gosh in the prehistoric past centers upon America. And as a curtain which has hereto the concealed the prehistoric connections between the people of ancient Egypt and of America is lifted, it will be seen that the the people of the eagle of the on the now being descended from the original people of the eagle on the continent, the twain the twain are one, and that prehistoric America was the original Egypt or Eagle Land prior to the mighty dispersion in the days of Pele. When the earth was divided and the great globe itself was nearly rent asunder. First born among the continents, says Augustus, America has been falsely denominated the New World. Here was the first dry land lifted out of the waters. Hers the first shore washed by the ocean that enveloped all the earth beside. And while Europe was represented only by islands, Rising here and there above the sea, America already stretched in an unbroken line of land from Nova Scotia to the far west. The ancient America, as we shall see, 
was inhabited by the grand race. If we look here, On August 2nd, 1917, there was a human skeleton discovered, deposited. In the blah, blah, I can't see. Atoka County. Oh my gosh. Crevice of limestone rock, Atoka County. This location being within the boundary of the hunting grounds and which the Comanche Indians were permitted to use as their hunting grounds for 90 days. At the time permission was given, a band of Greek in Creek Indians was hunting in different locations in Pittsburgh County without permission, which caused trouble between the Choctaw and Creek Indians. In all probability, Comanche Indians at the usual hunting season camped at this particular place. The human skull and skeleton shows that probably he was a Negro Indian type. And we all know the Choctaw Indians are of a Negro descent. Alright, so that shows the connection from the Polynesians. Well, not that. This will end. I'm sorry, I have one more article. This will show. The connection, this is irrefutable evidence. The sweet potato that is in Hawaii is the sweet potato from the Andes in South America. When we left, come to Hawaii, when we came, we took the South, we took the sweet potato with us. So we, we already know anciently we was in South America. We already know that surfing is ancient in South America. We already know our phenotypes match the ancient South Americans. And even the name of the sweet potato is the same in America. And they want to teach us that Christopher Columbus brought it. No, 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 no. This is ancient. Ancient. We already had the sweet potato from Peru. Because we was already in Peru. Peru is Cajico. America is Cajico. The ancient homelands. We deny our history. And our origins. And our culture. And our different lands. But history is, is releasing this information. We were in Peru. We lived in Peru. We match the ancient people of Peru.